This video is about something that means a lot to me, and that's minimizing creative friction so that I can get the ideas out of my head and into the world. And so I've come up with a list of five things that have helped me the most in minimizing that friction. Item number one is your rig, your setup, the room that you do your thing in. So whether it's your art room, your music room, make sure that in that room there's sections. So for when I'm gonna practice, I have a spot, a little stage where I practice and I have everything already set up to go, so I just have to turn it on and start. When I record, I have another section of my room where I record, and the lighting is all already set up through my room, so when I wanna record a video, I just turn on all the lights that are already set up. I don't have to put anything into place. If there's some items that you need to set up every time, just make sure that you're saving that for the quickest to set up items and that you can stow away to a spot where you always put it, you know where you're gonna get it. So like I said, you can get to work quicker. Number two, if you have a distracting to-do list, you have some emails that you need to send or a task that you need to complete for work, make sure they're done the day before a really creative day because when you're going to get to it, you don't need all those other things bugging you in the back of your mind, distracting you from your genius. Number three, the first item of work you're gonna wanna do in your day is going to be the work that requires the most brain power, the most focus and creativity. Ideally, the thing you're most passionate about and the thing that's gonna get you to your next level and into your dream life the quickest. Because anything that has to do with cleaning up or sending emails or doing any sort of accounting, all that stuff doesn't require as much focus or 100% of your energy like it does when you're trying to draw the utmost excellence into the piece of work that you are working on. Number four is before you start your work day, always do some sort of exercise. Do something that's gonna get your blood flowing. So for me, I need to do yoga for about 20 minutes before I do another 20 minute calisthenic workout, but that's just because I get really tight and I don't feel my best unless if I'm really stretched out. But your brain is an organ and the more blood that's flowing through it, the better it's gonna work and the more positive endorphins are gonna also flow through your body to make you feel better. I typically finish that workout with a nice cold shower too to boost my adrenaline levels to get me as hyped as I can going into a creative and productive day. And then number five to minimizing creative friction within your day is taking productive breaks. So if you're hungry and you need to eat, only eat as much as you need to eat. And then when you're done eating, if you can go on a walk, because that helps the food to digest and convert into energy quicker. And it's not something like exercise where you're gonna get a cramp from it. Make sure you're also drinking enough water too, because dehydration can give you a headache. It can also lead to exhaustion. If you don't have the option to take a walk, another option is some light stretching or cleaning around the house. I've often found that my most productive cleaning days are after I eat a meal and I'm like, I gotta work this off. And by the time I start cleaning, I start to feel better because I'm moving around, the food's digesting. You feel better about yourself because now your house looks cleaner, your room looks cleaner, something you've been putting off is taken care of. And some days you might just need a break and you're like, I can't do any of that productive stuff, but I challenge you to, on any of those days, if you can meditate in place of your overwhelmment or exhaustion that you feel mentally. And as a bonus item, I'd like to say that one of the biggest things I do that's helped me the most is split my day into two. So what that usually looks like is an hour and a half after my exercise in the morning, then I'll have a food break, go on a walk, come back at it, and usually I get about 45 minutes to an hour of productive work after that. And then I take a nap, a power nap, 20 minutes, alarm set. When that alarm goes off, I get up. It takes some practice, but you need to get up right when that happens because all your brain needs to do is just barely shut off for a sec. You're like, I didn't even fall asleep. That's the point. You just lose consciousness for like a second right at the end of that 20 minutes and your alarm goes off. That reset is better than any cup of coffee you can get. And from that point, I usually do another quick exercise just to get the blood flowing again. Probably grab a second cup of coffee and then I go into day two. And sometimes I don't get the full hour and a half out of day two to start. Usually it's like an hour and then another just breath exercise or something I want to do in between that time. And then another 45 minutes and I enjoy the rest of my evening. And it might sound like there's a lot of time not working within that, but all of the work that I do within those short bursts of energy are always so much more productive than when I just try to get stuff done, get stuff done, you know, don't take any breaks, not worry about what I'm putting into my body. 
it always leads to burnout. And I'm just so much happier when I can set expectations that I know I can handle for my day. And I know that within those time blocks, I'm going to give it 110%. Once again, thank you so much for watching. Let me know if there's something else you think I missed within my top five things that minimize creative friction. And please hit that like and subscribe if you haven't already. Share this with a friend and I hope to catch you in the next video. Peace.